Hello and uh, good evening to you. Thank you for tuning in right now to Majesty Christian TV Network. My name is Apostle Larry Dokeno. Uh, shall we pray? Father God, bless this time we are spending together. I pray it shall be profitable. We are, I pray that it will be revealing and impactful in Jesus' name. Give us the fullness of your blessing containing your word. And let the Holy Spirit give us understanding to that which we are about to share. We thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you once again for joining me. Uh, in the, for the next few moments, I want to just speak on what I title The Mighty Influence of Prayer. The Mighty Influence of Prayer. This is a part two of something I shared about two weeks ago. So I'm, 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 I'm going further with this topic, The Mighty Influence of Prayer. Now, the reason why I want to lay some emphasis on prayer is the fact that... Uh, we are in a certain season prophetically and I believe that one of the things that would help us as a people, as the church of God is prayer. Say prayer. And I need us to understand that prayer is so powerful that it is able to disarm evil. And it's able to also give us what? Victory. It's able to bring us protection. Say Amen. Now, I want to share with you, and I want to use that as uh, the story to share with you what I want to say on prayer. Now, my text is taken from Acts chapter 12, a very interesting account of how the power of prayer prevailed over the power of a king. Now, we know that rulers are powerful because they are backed by resources, by money, by, 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 by military, and what have you. You know, political figures can be very powerful, especially when they are in authority. And so, to be in trouble with the ruler of a land, that's, that's really a problem. That's, that's big trouble. Now, we are told in Acts chapter 12, I want to try and paraphrase the story. And as I go along, I may pick uh, one or two verses. We are told that, and this is when the church actually was blossoming in the book of Acts. Uh, in the book of Acts, and in chapter twelve, we are told that um, Herod had begun. King Herod had begun to persecute the church, and he saw that he could score some political advantage with that persecution. He saw that the more he persecuted the church, the more the Jewish people were happy. The religious leaders at the time, they were happy because uh, they didn't like the church which was coming up and was becoming so popular. People were becoming believers and believing in Jesus Christ. And so, uh, Herod thought he could score a political point by persecuting the, uh, the Christians. And as he did that, the Bible says that the Jews became happy. And the Bible says that he killed uh, James. James was the brother of, uh, uh, of John. You know you have those two brothers, uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. So he killed James, and, uh, and the Bible says he went further to arrest Peter. Peter, you know, was the leader of the church, the head of the church, and he went further to arrest Peter, and the Bible says he put him in prison. And intending to bring him out after the Passover, for trial and for possible execution. And the Bible says that he placed him in the prison. He secured Peter so well that I don't see how Peter could have escaped. Even if, if Peter had the possibility to, let's say, influence anybody or even to bribe. Let me just use that, you know, play the devil's advocate. To bribe his way, it would have been difficult because not all the 16 guards who were positioned to to protect him or to, 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 to keep him from escaping. Not all of them could have been influenced. Are you hear what, what I'm saying? So that is the kind of security he was placed behind in the prison. And the Bible says that when this happened, the church began to pray earnestly for Peter. I declare that in your time of need and trouble, May people gather and begin, begin to pray for you. Let the Lord raise on your behalf intercessors. 
people who will lift up their voices to God in heaven, cry out on your behalf, and for God to intervene. Say, I hear you. So, the church began to pray for Peter, and this is where I find uh, the power of prayer so interesting. You see, there are times when you are praying, you don't even know, uh, realize that your prayer is making impact. We are living in very, very uh, challenging times, but it is it has become important for us to arm ourselves, to arm ourselves in prayer. I was sharing with us in the part one, two weeks ago, of this message, that the world leaders are trying to confront the evil that is confronting our world today. They are trying to confront the evil with military force and power. But let me tell you something. The spirit that is at work in Terrorism and all the acts of destruction that we see today. I mean, when people are filled with malice and hatred and want to cause havoc and damage to other people, the spirit that is at work in these people is called the spirit of Amalek. There's an aggressive, aggressive spirit, a destructive spirit, an oppressive spirit, a spirit that shows no compassion. Now, we cannot destroy this spirit with the power of the gun. We cannot destroy it by a political mandate. It is a spirit that the church of Jesus Christ has to take on. Because if the church of Jesus Christ takes on this spirit, then we can contain it. And this is where the church ought to get up and stand so that our leaders will see the power of God. Say, I hear you. And so, the church realized that they didn't have political influence. They couldn't influence Herod to release Peter. They couldn't bribe anybody to get uh, Peter out of prison. In fact, the authorities were actually against the church. So what did the church decide to do? The church decided to begin to pray. You know, prayer is so awesome. That when all else fails, when everything has failed, let me tell you, Prayer will never fail. Hallelujah. I want to charge you. I want to encourage you. No matter what you are going through, no matter how difficult and impossible it seems, prayer will never fail. Prayer will influence people beyond themselves. Prayer will take over their thinking, will take over their feelings, will take over their emotions, and God will bend them to do His will in order that you, the child of God, Maybe be maybe maybe spared or fever. Say I hear you. And so the church began to pray for Peter and they prayed so hard that they didn't know what else to do but to pray. And thank God that it will get to a point where sometimes we know nothing else to do but to call upon God. And that is when we will see the glory of the Lord. They prayed and prayed and prayed. And the Bible says one day all of a sudden, just before the night before Herod was to bring out uh, Peter for trial. And possibly later execution. The Bible says the night before, an angel of the Lord descended into the prison and he tapped Peter and got him to get up and asked him to put on his clothes, his sandals, and he, the angel walked him out of the prison. And none of the guards could stop the angel because they were powerless and possibly they were immobilized and they didn't even know what was happening, but they just didn't have the power to react. Let me tell you, prayer has the power to immobilize and destabilize every issue and problem that is harassing you today. Anything that has locked you up in prison, has hijacked your blessing, has hijacked your fortune, has hijacked your progress. Let me tell you, there is something more powerful than that. More powerful than all these hijackers of your destiny and of your life. And that thing will set you free. That thing will declare you free in Jesus' name. And the thing I'm talking about is the prayer. I'm talking about the mighty influence of prayer in our lives. The church is being asked and being called upon today to arise in prayer because we have the answer to some of the world's problems. But we, most of the time, don't seem to realize what God has placed within our hands. So the Bible says that the angel released Peter and walked him out of the prison. 
they passed the second, the first second guard, and they went to the main gate leading to the city. And the Bible says that the gate opened unto them by itself. Hallelujah. When God descends and when God is involved, there can be no barrier, there can be no limitation whatsoever. You will walk through every kind of storm, every kind of problem, every kind of obstacle you will walk through and you are free. Say, I hear you. I proclaim the Lord's freedom and liberty unto you right now. In Jesus' name, every weapon that has been fashioned against you shall not prosper. I believe with me that as you begin to open your mouth and to call upon God, the enemy's power, the issues and the challenges that you are facing will be demobilized and immobilized and they will be dismantled and they will lose their impact upon your life. They will be totally powerless against you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so Peter was let out and now the angel left after they have crossed one major street. The angel disappeared. Now Peter was, his, was on his own. Now here I would like you to realize that you see, God will only come in and do for us what we are un, unable and incapable of doing for ourselves. You see, the angel walked him part of the journey and left because he got him to a place where he could manage all by himself. I want to declare unto you, you will receive the Lord's help at a time and in a situation where you cannot help yourself. And he will walk you through the problems of your life unto a place where you can stand on your own. That is what is called the mighty influence of prayer. Say, I hear you. I declare unto you, whatever you are going through, any experience that you are having, that the Lord is standing by, all you need to do is to call upon Him. All you need to do is to call upon Him. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We need to demonstrate the efficacy and the power of prayer. And I want to challenge you with this story, this passage that I've just narrated to you. I want you to know that there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing that can withstand the power of prayer. God has helped us. God has done much for us all because of the power of prayer. If you want to experience the power of prayer, then get on your knees and let's begin to pray. If you want to be a part of a praying church, a praying ministry, I want to invite you become a part of the Rivers of Life Bible Church. That is where we will pray together, we will worship God together, and we will experience the goodness of God like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. The point I just want to make in this short message is this, that there is something that prayer can do. You know, prayer is an invisible power or influence which we can wield through the Holy Ghost. And it can dismantle physical problems. It can break physical barriers. It can bring down physical limitations and ob obstructions. Prayer is so powerful. Prayer is so powerful. The best solution to any problem we ever have or we have or will ever have in this life is the power of prayer. And this I want to recommend strongly. If Peter can be set free from prison because the church prayed, let me tell you, there is no problem that we are facing on this earth we cannot be resolved through the power of prayer. I recommend prayer to you. Come, let's pray together. Join me. Join us. Rivers of Life Bible Church. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. You will see our number on the screen. You will see our email address on the screen. Call us and let's invite you. Join us as we lift up the name of the Lord and experience tremendous breakthroughs. The Lord bless you richly. And I look forward to coming your way again to share the word of God. Let's pray together and believe God for mighty, mighty miracles. The Lord bless you and take good care. Bye-bye.